So he fought Zab Judah. I don't need to talk about Zab Judah, undisputed champion, blah, 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 blah. Beat a host of names. You know, Zab, Zab had his rep at the time, but he had lost to Carlos Valdemir. But Top Rank decided, all right, we'll go ahead and have that fight. So he fought him, all right? I won't talk too much about Sean Ben Mitchell. So all I'm saying is that first set of fighters I just mentioned, they're the who's who in boxing, okay, at that given period of time. When Floyd fought them and how he beat them. Out of all those fighters, the only fighter coming off a loss was Zab Judah, and that was because Top Rank decided we, we had an agreement with Zab Judah to fight, and we're going to go ahead with that fight. It was supposed to be that Zab Judah was supposed to beat Carlos Balamir, and he was really landing some shots in Balamir, but Balamir could take it, and he just walked through them shots, man. And Zab, even with all his power, power punch and stuff, and he busted up Balamir, Balamir brought the heat, and that was what they were expecting to see happen to Floyd. You see what I'm saying? Anyway, enough of that. What I'm saying is, other than Zab Judah, those guys in the latter portion of Floyd's career, from his 36th fight to his 49th fight, are all top-notch, top of the level. I'm talking about across all sanctioning bodies in this division. They were the top, not just top 10. We're talking here, all those fighters there were in the top five. In fact, I can even break it down even more and say they were in the top three welterweights in the world when Floyd fought them. All of them. Zab Judah was the top two. Okay? Balamir was the lineal champion. I'm just saying and then all the other guys at super welterweight, almost all the super welterweight fighters that I talk about there, that would be Oscar De La Hoya, um, uh, shoot, I'm not editing this, um, and Canelo Alvarez, and um, that Puerto Rican fighter, which I just can't remember his name, I just blanked out there. Yeah, those guys, Oscar was top five, but the other two, they were number one. In their divisions. That's all I got to say about that. Let's go on. Sean Bay Mitchell, Sean Bay Mitchell was a soft touch, in my opinion, but he was just to kind of acclimatize Floyd to welterweight. Arturo Gatti was the number two uh, super lightweight in the world. Henry Brussels was another touch up, just a soft touch to see what would happen with a certain style. And Floyd moved him down. Demarcus Corley, that was a hell of a fight. An uh, introductory fight to the division. He was a former world champion. He just lost his title to Zab Judah. So he was coming off a loss as well. And Floyd basically mowed him down. And then at lightweight, he had two really... I don't really esteem these guys very highly. They pumped him up top rank. But Philip Endu, yeah, he had a loss to one guy. But he had gotten knocked out. Floyd pretty much mowed him down. He was a still good competition, though. Too slow. Victoriano Sosa was game from the Dominican Republic. But again, you know, this guy, he pushed Floyd a bit. But... Again, it's tough and everything, but again, not really somebody I esteem very highly. Jose Luis Castillo, however, was esteemed very highly. He was the top lightweight in the world. Fought for him, beat him twice, okay? Twice, all right? Jesus Chavez, look at this man's resume. You see that little guy, Jesus Chavez? That was a hell of a boxer, man. Jesus Chavez went on. Randy Shields was his trainer. Jesus Chavez went on to become two-time, two-divisional world champion. He was the super featherweight WBC world champion, and then he became the IBF lightweight world champion. All right, this little guy was trouble. And they actually predicted after the fight, even though it was stopped, they predicted after the fight that Jesus Chavez would become world champion because this guy gave Floyd, I think Jesus Chavez gave Floyd his toughest fight, and Emmanuel Augustus, and we could say other guys like Miguel Cotto, Jose Luis Castillo, um, Marcos Maidana, Gave him tougher fights in terms of action packed tougher fights. But truly, the guy who pushed Floyd was Jesus Chavez and Emmanuel Augustus. All right? These are the guys that pushed Floyd early in his career. I think later on, he knew how to handle anybody who was trying to bring the heat to him. Right? But to me, Jesus Chavez was Floyd Mayweather's Joe Frazier. And the style he brought and the way how he fought remind me a lot of smoking Joe Frazier. Okay? But the difference was that. Whereas Muhammad Ali, he didn't have his guard to protect himself from the left hook. Floyd had his guard, and that's why Jesus Chavez couldn't knock him out. Because Jesus Chavez, at the time, he was a knockout artist. He used to mow down everybody. I mean, you just go check the guy's history, man. Diego Corrales. Everybody talks about Diego Corrales. But before I go there, Carlos Hernandez. Carlos Hernandez was, he became a, a world champion, right? He had fought Gennaro Hernandez. He had lost to him. He got a second opportunity against Floyd Mayweather, and he lost to him. Now... What's interesting about this fight is that Floyd damaged both his hands against Carlos Hernandez's head. And he fought through the remainder of the fight with damaged hands. I think he hurt his hand somewhere in the, I don't know if it was the sixth round or something. 
But this dude fought with damaged hands to the end of that fight. And he managed to still win that fight on points. He was trying to stop Carlos Hernandez early. And he hit his hand over Carlos Hernandez's head and that was it. And that, to me, was another incredible thing about Floyd. He could overcome adversity and get that W under any circumstance, showing his mental fortitude. So it wasn't just skill set, it wasn't just smarts in the ring. It's also, he was just mentally tough and physically tough as well. And everybody knew that, like, super featherweight, this man was tough, right? Diego Corrales, man, we don't need to talk about Diego Corrales. His reputation precedes him. You know, he was a, what, I think he was a three-time, two-divisional world champion, um, unified world champion, all kinds of stuff, man. This guy was, he was just bad. So, and he beat everybody. He beat, the only guy, he, yeah, he beat everybody. He beat uh, Jose Luis Castillo. He beat Diego Corrales. No, he didn't, he didn't beat Floyd. He beat whole, all the guys in his respective division that he was coming up with, he beat. He beat Roberto Garcia, who was the IBF champ. He beat uh, Joel Casamayor. He beat Asselino Freitas. And he literally beat Jose Luis Castillo as well. All right, Castillo got one, he got one. You know what I mean? Um, Joel Casamayor got two, he had one. And so on. Asselino Freitas, he knocked out Asselino Freitas. Right? This guy was bad. And he got a whole list of names other than that. But these were the guys, these were the, the, the dudes at the division at the time. Floyd never fought Asselino Freitas, he never fought Joel Casamayor. All right? Never. From lightweight to super featherweight to lightweight, he never got the opportunity to fight him. They didn't want to fight him. Right? We already talked about Emmanuel Augustus. And the thing about Emmanuel Augustus was, Emmanuel Augustus knew how to ride punches, he knew how to roll punches, and still get his punches in, in between. He was a very slick fighter, they called him the drunken master. Of course, this guy wouldn't be rated very highly, but he was very important to Floyd Mayweather, so that's why I mentioned him. Gregorio Vargas was a former world champion, but I don't esteem him too highly. He's kind of like the guy like Sean Bay Mitchell. He was good, don't get me wrong, he was good, but he wasn't, he wasn't really, I wouldn't call him an elite fighter. I call him a B-level fighter. Sean B. Mitchell at the time, Floyd Ford, was like a B minus, C, C plus level fighter. You know what I mean? Emmanuel Burden was, you know, another C level fighter, but he brought certain things to the table that taught young know, Floyd Mayweather that everything's not about power and speed. And another guy who did the same thing to him was um, Carlos Alberto Ramarios. Okay. Now the other big name was Angel Manfredi. Angel Manfredi was considered this guy who, you know could mow over people. That was his reputation. And, and they didn't think that Floyd would just go blow him out in two rounds. But that's exactly what happened. And it was a shock to everybody. Of course, you always have to consider weight and all of that that plays into the into the picture because Angel Manfred came down from lightweight to fight Floyd. But still, nonetheless, you have to give Floyd his credit for blowing this guy out of the water. And of course, Gennaro Hernandez, I mean, undefeated as a super featherweight, went up to lightweight, fought Oscar De La Hoya, lost to him. But again, he never really took no serious damage. Got, I think a slightly busted eye with uh, Oscar, and he decided he would call it a day after the sixth round. He was actually a competitive fight through five. Uh, against Floyd, it wasn't competitive at all. It was just, you know, his brother had to stop the fight because basically Floyd was just beating him up. You know, Oscar was competitive with him, but Floyd was just, I mean, Floyd just plowed through him. And Gennaro Hernandez was undefeated for... Uh, 37 fights, I think, or something like that. And then he lost to Oscar. More than 37. I can't remember. I mean. And he basically ended his career fighting Floyd Mayweather, and that was it for him. He was reaching the end of the year. He gave Floyd the break he deserved. You look at all those names I just mentioned, man. That's a hell of a resume. Fight after fight after fight. And my point being this. A lot of people like to say, oh, this guy had 140 fights. Well, this guy had 200 fights. Well, this guy had 200 and something fights, and listen to me carefully. Or oh, they had 20, 30 fights a year. Listen to me carefully. I'm not saying that having that many fights is not taxing on the body. I get you with that. But here's my thing. When you boil down all those fights every year, a dude might fight a guy five times. Same opponent. So when you say 20 fights, and you take into consideration the good opponents get fought multiple times in the year and then in between you got the stay busy fights at the end of the day do the mathematics you'll find out that most of these fighters fought two opponents every year two worthwhile opponents top level look at Floyd Mayweather's early career and I'll show you what I mean early in his career like 1998 for instance he fought five times well why did he fight five times because these were lower tier opponents see what I'm saying in 1997 this guy fought 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 
11, 12. He fought 12 times in 1990. I'm sorry. He fought, wait, wait, hold on. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. He fought 9 times in 1997. And he debuted in 1996. Two more times. So if you go from 1996 when he debuted to the end of 1997, that's 12 fights. He fought 12 fights in one year. Okay? So it's not how much fights. You know, some people say, he had 200 fights. Well, Roger Mayweather would put it this way. Who he beat? You 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 have you have 200 fights, but who did he beat? And the who he beat is important. It's not how many times I beat this dude. It's who the dude is. And back in the day, they had a lot of rematches. It's true because they had like one banner, one promotion. Everybody fought everybody. I mean, everybody fought everybody. If you was a bum off the side of the sidewalk, you could get to fight a world champion. Not for a championship fight per se, but it, it's possible because everybody used to fight everybody. Boxing wasn't as organized as it is today, right? It's kind of like the MMA in its early stages. Now boxing has a stratification, and the stratification helps to build super fights. See, it's a business. So you try to get the best to fight the best. Just like how in another sport like, say for instance, uh, Wimbledon, you have the entry phase, then you got another phase, another level, then you got the quarterfinals, you know, or you got the the um, round eight, round seven, round six, or whatever, then you got the quarterfinals, and then you got the semifinals, and then you got the finals. This is to basically filter out the best so they can fight the best. So when I hear people say, oh, the, the guys back in the day, they had 200 fights, 300 fights. Yeah, that's because boxing wasn't as organized as it is today. 